Chapter Seven: Rolled Apples. I stared at Simon's forehead. It was still bleeding. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid to move. It seemed like ages before the creep got out of his car and drove away. When we were able to sneak out of the bat cave, recess was long over. We ran to the washroom. Simon wiped away the blood. It wasn't a big cut, but I could tell he was scared. So was I. Do we tell somebody? I asked. Simon shook his head. We'll get in trouble for having a secret hangout, and my folks will kill me for spying on that car. So Simon and I went back to class. Simon said he'd fallen down. He said we were late for class because we were cleaning up the cut. Mr. Shang rolled his eyes. He sure rolls his eyes a lot. I never wanted to go back to the bad cave again, but Simon did. He didn't say much, but I could tell he was really mad. Every day he snuck off it by himself and wrote down all the times the, cor- the car showed up. Why are you doing this? I asked. Who cares about that jerk? He's up to no good," said Simon. "What if he'd really hurt me? What if he'd hit a little kid?" So, are you going to go to the police? I asked. Simon gave me a funny look. "No, Sam. The police are coming to us." "Oh yeah, I forgot. And on Thursday, I'm going to give them my timesheet." Simon told me. "They'll know what to do." On Wednesday night, Simon came over to my house. We worked on our project a bit. Then we got out the thousand dollars. I've been thinking," Simon said. "Said Simon, we just can't keep this money. We've got to tell somebody about it." I closed my fist around the wad. Man, I did not want to hand it over to somebody. We can't spend it," said Simon. Everyone would ask where we got the, mo- the、uh, so much money. I know," I said, "but I just like looking at it, holding it, just dreaming about what I could buy." Simon nodded. But I've got an idea. What if we hand it over to the police as part of our project? We'd really surprise everyone, and we get a great mark. What do you think? Well, if I had to give up the money, it wasn't a bad idea. In fact, Simon was pretty smart. Then I thought of something. Hey, I yelled. Maybe we'll get a reward. And so we agreed on it. I said I'd go home for lunch and bring the money back with me. We didn't want to walk around with a thousand dollars all day at school. So guess what? I ran home at lunchtime. I opened up my desk. No money. What? I dumped a drawer out of on the floor. No money. I looked everywhere. I knew that I had to to put. I knew I had put the money in there. Where was it? Who took it? I ran back to school to tell Simon the bad news. He didn't believe me. Oh come on, Sam. Do you think I'm going to fall for a stunt like that? You're just keeping the money for yourself. You're being a jerk. No, really, it wasn't there. You saw me put it away. It's gone. Simon gave me a dirty look. And then it was time for our presentation. We began with all the boring stuff first, before the police showed up for the fun stuff. Okay, I said. Okay, I said to start our presentation. Say you're in trouble. Who are you going to call? Your mommy yelled out. Jim Brody. All the kids laughed. The police. That's who said Simon. Yeah, and let me tell you, I said, our work is really tough. Like we might get a call in the middle of the night to go on a, sca- a stakeout. Mister Sean broke in. Are you telling us that you work with the police, Sam? Well, I have in the past," I said, when Simon and I cut some crooks and stuff. But you don't really work with them, right, Sam?" asked Mr. Shang. "Well," I stared at. I started to say. Simon hissed at me to shut up. Then Simon read our report. He told the kids a few things about how you get to be a cop. He talked about how long you have to go to school. Then I said a few things about the kinds of work that cops get to do. I could see everyone was staring to get starting to get bored. I look at my watch. It was exactly one forty-five. The cops were supposed to be here. And when you call nine one one, who's going to show up at your door? Then someone knocked at the classroom door. Perfect timing. I opened the door, but it was only the principal. Sam, Simon, he said, the police are waiting for everyone downstairs. Downstairs? Why didn't they? Why didn't they come up? I thought fast. 
Maybe the cops had showed up with their new patrol cars. Maybe they were going to take us all on a high-speed chase. Okay, everyone, I said, let's go. We are about to see how the police do their work, and we all trooped down the stairs. I was leading the way. When I turned the corner into the backyard, I stopped so fast that everybody banged into everybody else. I couldn't believe what I saw. One cruiser was out on the street, and the two police officers were sitting on two really big horses in the schoolyard. All the kids were pushing around me to see. Oh, wow! Oh, cool! I heard kids say. Officer Brandon got down off her horse. I guess you know all about the stable we have at 14 Unit, she said. No, said Mr. Shang. Simon Simon didn't mention it. We shrugged. It might have been in the stuff we didn't get to read, didn't get around to reading. Not every unit has a stable, explained Officer Brennan. We do because of all the parks in the neighborhood. Horses allow us to patrol in the park. Then the kids asked lots of questions. Jim had a really nosy question. Is, the, is it true that Sam helps you with police work, he asked. One policeman looked over at me. It was the cop who hauled me back to school last week. Sam said that he's been helping you clean up the neighborhood, said Jim Brody. Uh-oh. The big cop smiled at me. We wouldn't want to give away any police secrets, he said. But Sam will soon be working on a really nasty case. Huh? Come here, Sam. Show the kids how you help out with some street-level police work. Huh? I watched as the police the policeman walked over to the cruiser. Officer Sin, he said, would you please hand Sam our street-level cleanup tool? I watched as Officer Singh got a broom and dustpan out of the trunk. Here you go, Sam, said the policeman. Time to show these kids how you go about cleaning up the streets. He pointed to the horses. Then he pointed to the ground beneath the horses. Then he pointed to what was on the ground beneath the horses. We call them road apples, explained Officer Brennan. Better get started.